I'd like to introduce Dr. Alex Bonacaz, who's a board certified endocrinologist. And this is the doctor that I conducted the research with on steroid users in the world. The name of the article is Characteristics and Attitudes of Men Using Anabolic Androgenic Steroids. It's a survey of 2,385 men. It was published in the American Journal of Men's Health, November, December edition in the end of 2020. Dr. Bonacaz, it's my pleasure. I met you many, many years ago, mm -hmm. and I'd like to introduce you to the world as you are my equal colleague as an anabolic expert. This is the other anabolic doc in the world research-wise with research. This is a brilliant young doctor. He's leading the charge with me for working with men that are on anabolic steroids. He never gives a blessing to it but he realizes that men use steroids and he's a professional medical endocrinologist. He knows this stuff and he's working with men to make sure that they suffer less. Dr. Bonacaz, thank you so much for coming tonight. Can you please tell us about this amazing article? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much, Dr. O'Connor. It's a pleasure to be here. Always excited to be a guest on the Anabolic Doc. So this is fantastic. Um, as you know, I reached out to you years ago to kind of work on a project because I had realized, had as you had kind of known years ago, the medical community, there's been a gap in terms of care for men who use anabolic steroids. Um, there just is not a lot of education in medical school and the medical community in general has just not done a great job of educating its professionals on this topic. So as anabolic steroid use continues to become more and more prevalent, there's an increasing need to improve the strategies for harm reduction and also the resources for cessation for patients. So to further expand on everything in the literature, which was really not a ton, we designed a web-based survey of men over the age of 18 who used anabolic steroids within the last five years. Now, we looked into many aspects of AAS use, such as age, um, at what time the use begins, common doses and compounds, motivation for use, and also their experience with the medical system, as well as their experience with cessation. And as Dr. O'Connor noted, we had 2,385 men meet the inclusion criteria the largest survey um, of its type on anabolic steroid use to date, which we're very proud of. So going over some of these results and, you know, there was a lot of findings, but I wanted to just hit the high notes so everyone would kind of get the most important take homes. First of all, the average participant in this study was a man aged around 31, 32 years old, and about half the participants were from the United States. We got a lot of good data in terms of why men use anabolic steroids. A lot of it was not particularly shocking, um, especially to those in the community, but the about 82% of people used anabolic steroids to improve their appearance. 50% did so to gain strength. And a more interesting finding was as nearly 30% used anabolic steroids as a means to improve their self-esteem or to treat um, underlying body image issues. This relates to things such as body dysmorphia, muscle dysmorphia, um, and I think that's an extremely important point given that the focus has classically been on things like anorexia in women, but things such as body image disorders in men, um, it seems to not get much attention. And I think that this is almost the parallel to anorexia where you have body image issues and men are desperate for improvement. And so they go to anabolic steroids. So I was, I think that was a very important thing to, find to um, kind of hammer that point home to the medical community that we need better resources. Um, I think one of the most things was our data on how men using anabolic steroids view physicians and how their interaction with the medical community was. Just briefly, less than half of the men, about 44%, disclosed their anabolic steroid use to their physician. Now, it's kind of interesting because of the men that did disclose their use, 
Over half of them, 55%, reported that they felt judged or discriminated against for their use. Wow. Now, this was really alarming to me because, you know, as healers, as doctors, we, we don't judge. We want, to, we want to have the patients come in. We want to reduce harm of whatever activity they're doing, such as if you have a smoker, you know, you're not, you're not going to be encouraging it, but you might screen for certain disorders and then help them with resources to quit. So it's very concerning to me when I hear that a patient feels they were discriminated against for seeking out help. Um, now, on the contrary, which was very interesting, to the men that said they did not report their anabolic steroid use, they reported why they didn't feel comfortable doing so. And ironically, one of the most commonly um, noted reasons was that they were feared of being judged. And so this was kind of just, they were right, I guess, because half of the guys that disclosed it reported that they felt that way. There was also concern about they didn't have confidence in their physician regarding anabolic steroid use. Now we dug a little deeper into this question and we had them fill out basically a one to 10 ranking of which of these people have the best understanding of anabolic steroid use. And we had things such as kind of bodybuilding gurus and coaches, um, you know, internet forum, other AAS users at the gym, um, bodybuilding books, and then physicians. Physicians ranked last place. We had physicians at I think 4.5 out of 10 was their score or four out of 10. And the gurus were the top ones at 6.5 out of 10. So no one's perfect, but they sure viewed the gurus. Um, what's that? It's unbelievable. It's, just it's unbelievable. And, you know, I think it's actually might not be that wrong because, you know, in medical, how much education did you get on, on anabolics in your pharmacology class? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, not one minute. And this is the, yeah. these are the real pieces in the streets when we were designing this that we knew we, we, well, we were theoretically, we were hypothetically thinking, well, this is what we're gonna, see. and indeed when it came out, yeah. from, straight out from the literature, right, right, it came right in and we looked at this data and we analyzed the data, it's the proof, and it's the largest survey in the world that was done like the way it was done with us, where it went through yeah. an IRB board and yep. we, time we had Dr. Joe Alloy, which is the chief of endocrinology department, Wake Forest. Yep. Um, these are real doctors that yep. are getting on board right here. Yeah. And I think that's really important because there's a lot of things like, sure. Some of the things that came out in this study, I think, especially people in the bodybuilding and AAS community, it might not shock them, but when you're in the medical world, you have to have the data, you have to have the, the, you know, the data to back it up. And so when you, when you, make this proof of concept and you're able to kind of show this, I think it really echoes the call of action that the medical community really does need to take this, um, you know, seriously and realize there's millions of patients out there suffering and we need to provide better resources. That's it. And just a few, I think in kind of a perfect segue into the, the people who tried to quit using anabolics. Um, so 46% of these guys tried to stop using anabolic steroids. Um, and of the people that tried to quit, about 40% successfully stopped. Now, about 60% of the, of the men that tried to quit, they, they began using again. And I think what was really striking, there were men that had quit for over three years, about 21%, they quit for three years and then they went back to using. And I think this highlights a few things, you know, it's one, they, they really, like you said, they really like using anabolics because of how they feel. And it's also really hard to quit. Um, I think maybe a few things, don't you think sometimes they probably hang out with their, you know, other friends are using anabolics or their environment in the gym. It makes it challenging, right? Social, the, the social cultural, I mean, this day and age with this, right? With this yeah. social media, I have guys every day doing consults and it's like, doc, it's so difficult. I, if I'm going to stop this, I have to get away. It's like people put, it's a, like alcohol. Their whole right? network, right. It's an AA. There's the 12 step program. There's the people, places and things. And you have to get away from that because it just stimulates this whole reel and it's, it's uncomfortable and it's, you're going to keep using. So, yes. and, and let's be honest. I mean, a lot of men like using anabolic steroids. Sure. We do not give it a blessing. No. We can't, we don't have to, but we don't have to disparage these men that are using this. So we scare them away. This is the basic yeah. message. We look at the data. We have the data that the amazing data 
who they are, what countries, the whole world. It's pretty, it's pretty predictable. Perfect. And it's young guys that are using it because they want to feel great. They're not doing yeah. it for professional sports. No, they're not. And that's an excellent point there. You know, we, we had kind of known that was going to happen, but like, you know, the stereotype is, oh, it's a professional bodybuilder, professional athlete. No, those, those are then the minority, the average male using anabolic steroids is your local gym goer. Um, it's not even, I mean, the ones that compete are not even the majority, right? I mean, you know, he's not going to, and, and this, this, this person, this man, of course, women are in the mix too, but this is not, this is about men. Right. Are, this is a survey of men. Just, yeah. Yeah. So that's certainly more literature, more research. We're working forever Absolutely. together with the grace of God. But if you look at this, men like to do steroids and take risks. They yeah. like to drive fast cars. They, they jump off a bridge, a 60 foot bridges into, into water. These yeah. are men. There's not that there are women that do this, but this is testosterone driven. Mm -hmm. we, we all know as physicians, the, the data, the, the, a young man, epidemiologic of public health data, young men, 18 to 35 die from trauma. Yeah. Because they're men. And so just natural testosterone makes us pretty crazy risk takers. Risk appetite is high. They, exactly. They take more risks and they take more testosterone. We're not even here tonight to talk about what it does is for the, the heart and the, the brain and the psychiatric, but this is a survey of the characteristics. And I think the amazing take home message is that it's huge. Yeah. The numbers, we broke a record. I mean, what was the record? 1200 before. Yeah. Something. I want to say um, the previous survey, it had about, um, I think the second largest was 1900. Um, and yeah, that was about, 13, 14 years ago. And so, I mean, I felt like it was time for an update, right? <laughs> Dr. Bonacaz, we did it. And the message to the physicians, because so many physicians yep. reach out to me and they work with me and they contact my social media venues. Physicians don't know what to do. And we're going to put together right. CMEs and teaching and, and, and things in the future. But for today, there, there are good young doctors like Dr. Bonnick has. I'm one of the older guys, but I'm still out there. Right? And you're still pretty young. <laughs> and everything else, I'll just keep staying out there. I'm living to 110 with the poodles. Everyone knows this. Of course, so, absolutely. You got the young guys here that are outstanding, real doctors, not anti-aging. I'm so no, no. no political correctness on this stuff. And you want to anti-age, don't have a heart attack. You want to talk That's about- That's my favorite line. <laughs> I want to talk about androgens that's a whole other ball of wax here yeah. we are physicians and healthcare providers because we're going to have to rely more on nurse practitioners and mid-level practitioners i want you to understand what's going on look at our research look at this paper the american journal of men's health you could look at this it's for free right it's public it's an open access you know just wanted to give kind of a teaser trailer and then you know i, I really encourage people to go through, even if, you know, it, it's a lot of detail, but even looking at the charts and seeing that the breakdown of the different compounds, not necessarily stuff you wouldn't assume, but having the data in these numbers, I think it really echoes the call of action that the medical community, we're going to need to, I think we're going to need to make guidelines for harm reduction, right? And like you said, I mean, and I know we're kind of working on some stuff, that's a sneak preview, but you know, there's, there's, um, I think that it's exactly the same as if you have someone with uh, smoking cessation and we, you know, there's specific guidelines. If you're a smoker, they do um, a CT, you know, lung, lung cancer screening, right? Same type of concept. It's not that you're putting a blessing, but you're also saying, well, because you have X risk factor, we're going to do X diagnostic test. And, you know, you've, you've highlighted that so beautifully on your channel, things like the coronary calcium, the echocardiogram cardiovascular is obviously the key for all of this. And so I think that the next step into obviously increasing awareness is to figure out how do we reduce harm until people are ready and able to quit, which is tough. And, and the truth is, Dr. Bonnick has, we can't give a blessing on it, but some men just lo love androgen. Right. Yep. And we don't know it, for the TRT, that spectrum of what's TRT, testosterone right. replacement, to steroid when it's the same drug, well, dose-dependent differences. Of course. The line, it becomes a steroid, not to mention there's there are specific agents and the list of them is incredible. We've put it up, but and I think I think to the uh, I think to the physicians in the medical community out there, I mean, most of these men using this and especially these gurus, they 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 have researched pharmacology far beyond what you can imagine in terms of the complexity and the depth. Right. And I mean it, it really is 
amazing um, how detailed a lot of this is. And I think, you know, frequently I talk with colleagues at, you know, other institutions and such, and they, they are asking me, what's Trend, what's DECA, what's Anivar? And I think you know this really well, is if, if, you, at, if you don't know what these buzzwords are and what these other anabolic compounds are, the patients aren't gonna feel like they can trust you. And I, I get it, I get it. They have, to, yeah, they have so, to feel confident in their doc, so. With social media now, when sure. you have a guy that's called More Plates, More Dates, who's exploding in the world, and he's a guru, yeah. and, and against our advice, the, the free, he has freedom to do it. YouTube lets him do it. He's sure. giving, um, he's giving medical. Let's, let's be honest. They they're giving medical advice. Let's be honest, and 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 they're not doctors because they're just cavalier. They don't care. So, but this is if the doctor doesn't understand trend, anadrol, anavar, mm -hmm. SARMs. It's 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 a lot. But like anything else, if you're interested, we're, we did it, we're interested. I was yeah. the first one, a real doctor, not an anti-aging doctor, to, to <laughs> lay down and to serve the, these people that are underserved. And in the end, we yeah. don't know what happens to androgens, what's gonna happen. Some yeah. men love testosterone and it's appropriate. It's called testosterone replacement. You're an endocrinologist. Sure. Where's the line? There's, there, there's, it's a blurred line now. It and is. Yeah. That's, doctor, thank you so much. My pleasure. It's always great to be here and look forward to the future of uh, testosteronology. This is, thank you so much. Things are exciting. This is our first historical research together and we have more planned guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.